Shortly after hearing about real estate syndications and learning how simple it is to generate passive income, you might start wondering, okay, but what about taxes? Hi, I'm Greg Butcher with Blue Sky Equity Partners, and I'm so glad you're watching right now because you're about to learn how easy it really is to reap the rewards of the tax benefits associated with real estate syndications. Taxes are not exciting, are they? Well, maybe after this video, you'll think they are. When you invest in a real estate syndication, the first thing to know is that every year you'll get what's called a Schedule K-1 for your taxes. This typically comes in the spring, sometime in March. Basically, a K-1 statement reports your income or losses for a specific real estate syndication investment. If you're invested in several syndications, you'll get a separate K-1 statement for each of them. One of the biggest benefits to investing in real estate is that you can write off the expenses. Another major benefit is depreciation, which can be accelerated by something called cost segregation. If you've ever owned a rental home, you're probably familiar with depreciation, which means you can write off the value of the asset over a certain amount of time. This reduces the amount of income you actually receive in a particular year, at least on paper, so you're not taxed on all of it. In residential real estate, including both single-family homes and multifamily apartments, we depreciate a property over 27 and a half years. So if you buy a rental home, you can write it off little by little every year for 27 and a half years. The depreciation schedule for non-residential commercial real estate, like office, retail, or industrial property, is a little bit longer, at 39 years. If you remember, however, we don't hold these syndications for 39 years, or even 27 and a half years. We only plan to hold for, let's say, five years. If we only took the depreciation for five years out of that 27 and a half years, we'd be leaving 22 and a half years worth of depreciation benefits on the table. But that's where cost segregation and accelerated depreciation come into play. When we buy these multifamily apartment buildings, we'll have a cost segregation specialist come out and look around the property to produce a cost segregation study. As they conduct the study, they'll say, well, those sidewalks, instead of 27 and a half years, you can write them off over 15 years. Those carpets and those dishwashers, yeah, you can write those off in a schedule of five years, and so on and so forth. Suddenly, we have a schedule that allows us to write off all these different pieces of the property on a much shorter timeline. That increases the amount of write-offs we can take up front during those first five years that we actually own the property. That's a portion of what the sponsors or general partners are handling in the background. And you'll see those losses reflect reflected in your K-1s each spring. But wait, it gets better. For a few more years, we can take advantage of something called bonus depreciation. Bonus depreciation lets us take a certain portion of all the depreciation that's on less than a 20-year schedule in the same year we buy the property. We don't have to take it over five years or 15 years. Instead, we get a much larger amount of depreciation in the year we make the investment than in any other year. Through 2022, we're able to take 100% of that under 20-year depreciation in the first year. After that, it's being phased out. So in 2023, we'll be able to take 80% of it, 60% in 2024, 40% in 2025, and 20% in 2026, which will be the last year for it unless Congress passes new legislation. I think one of the coolest parts about investing in syndications is getting cash flow returns each quarter when you get your K-1 in the spring, it doesn't show you made money. It will actually show you lost money because of all these depreciation benefits. While you're actually cashing checks and having money coming in, on paper, it looks like you're losing money. Now, I know this can be confusing, but for tax purposes, that's a really good thing. That means you are likely not going to have to pay any taxes on that cash flow income. Now, as for the rest of the losses, you'll have to talk to your own CPA about how they apply to your own tax situation and how much of the losses you can actually apply, if any, to your ordinary income. I want to make sure you hear this. It's likely that your ongoing cash flow will not be tax-free, but tax-deferred. You may not have to pay taxes on it right now, but when the asset is sold, again, we'll say in five years, there will be a depreciation recapture and you will have to pay taxes on the gains. Again, your CPA is your best friend here. Talk to your CPA about how this will apply to your personal tax situation, because everyone's tax situation is going to be different. All in all, that's what you can expect when investing in a real estate syndication. A K-1 each spring and paper losses throughout the life cycle of the project. So, if you've invested in a syndication before, what were some of the biggest tax benefits you found from the investment? And if you haven't yet invested in a syndication, what's holding you back? I can't wait to read your comments. If you're interested in learning how investing in real estate syndications can help you achieve financial freedom and live the life you've always wanted, I'm personally inviting you to join our Blue Sky Investor Club today. There's no cost and no commitment to join, and you'll find the link below down in the description. In closing, give this video a thumbs up 
and make sure you're subscribed here so you get notified when I post the next one. Do you have a friend who needs to hear this? Share it with them. I'm Greg with Blue Sky Equity Partners. See you next time.